Hey everybody, video 44 coming at you with another video. So I attempted to do the Atlanta Hawks video and realized I couldn't remember anybody's name. So I just figured I'd do that video all over again. Anyway, the game starts in about 30 minutes. So we had better uh, hurry up and get this over with so you guys can get going. But anyway, okay. Uh, the players you want to pay attention to tonight. Trey Young is questionable. DeAndre Hunter is questionable. So if that's the case, then you definitely are going to see a whole lot of John Collins, a whole lot of Onyeko Kongwu, whole lot of um, uh, uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, Kevin Herter, uh, Lou Williams. Uh, those are the players. Those are the guys you want to keep very close eye on. They're going to have impact on this basketball game. For the Los Angeles Lakers, of course, we have King James, who's not going to be able to go. Uh, Coach Vogel said that the knee has swelling, and until that swelling goes down, he ain't going to play him. So that's the end of that. AD will probably be available, as in probable. Malik Monk also probable. Russell Westbrook also probable. So we have most of our team back except for the King. And with the effort that we gave in the last game, if we can get that effort out there again, given the fact that they may be shorthanded, I think we can really put up a good show for ourselves. Uh, it's an early game, as we said. It's a Sunday game. You know, we don't love those on the road. And I can't honestly remember the last time the Lakers played a early Sunday game in Atlanta. I don't think we have. Not, not since I've been watching. <laughs> in the 20-something years that I've been watching, I don't remember us ever having a game early in Atlanta. Usually in Orlando, we have those games. Um, New York, we also often have those games. Toronto, we usually have those early Sunday games. But Atlanta, I don't think I've ever seen that. But that's what it's going to be today. Um, and so on and so forth. So, what do I expect to see? Well, it all depends on if Trey Young plays, honestly. It all does depend on whether or not he's able to go. Because if he's able to go, then it's going to be a top-heavy, him-scoring-all-day type of game. That's how he runs things. He'll get his assists because he's a very good assist player, but he gets his assists like Russell Westbrook, kind of within his own flow, known, his own way of doing things. It's him controlling the ball, and if you get it, you better make it type of thing, rather than it being a bunch of plays being run and a lot of different stuff for guys to find balance as a team. So if he's not out there, uh, I actually think that this is a team that can be a little better because of it. Because you got a lot of talent on this team who can score individually, guys who can drop 30 over here, 30 over there, 30 over there. But because you got Trey Young taking 20 shots a game, they never really find that balance. So this is one of those situations where I think they they are a team that needs to make some trades to kind of make it, more, make it make more sense, make their roster make a bit more sense, and they are in trade rumors. Um, so, you know, a lot, a lot of what happens tonight could determine some things, or today rather could determine some things for their squad. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, the fact that DeAndre Hunter is also not going to be out there could kind of shrink the, the, the roster a bit more, and you will see more of Kevin Herter. He's going to be a big-time player tonight. I expect him to hit hit some shots and do a lot of things for that team. He's a, a player that I think could maybe make an all-star team one day. Just looking at how he's played and the limited um, usage that he has, uh, he does a, he's able to give you maximum production, and I really like him as a scorer as well as a guy who can do some other combination of things as well. He's not just a one-trick pony, so pay attention to him tonight. Um, Onyeka Kongwu is somebody you want to pay very close attention to. He's a young guy who missed most of his rookie season last year, a um, guy who played with the Ball brothers in, in, in high school and stuff like that. So a uh, California guy who's probably going to want to make, um, make, make a name for himself in a game like this, uh, especially if they do not have... Um, DeAndre Hunter out there that just means more usage for a guy like that, even though he plays a different position. You know what I'm trying to say. All right, so um, another guy I'm paying attention to is Clint Capella. He's having a very bad season for his standards. I don't know what the heck is going on there, why he seems to be rendered useless in that roster right now. Hopefully, uh, you know, we can see him maybe move somewhere else so we can get more of a – get back to being his old self because I don't know what they did to Clint Capella in Atlanta this year. But his numbers have not been up to par for who he is, and we all know that. Uh, what else? There's a guy by the name of Sharif Cooper that I've championed a lot. One of my favorite rookies of this class, but unfortunately he plays behind Trey Young, so you never see him. If Trey doesn't play, I'd like to think they're going to give him those minutes, but that's not how that goes. Uh, they just don't put him in rotation. It's just what they're doing. Uh, but I believe that if they were to start him consistently, let's say Trey Young, God forbid, went down with an injury and they gave Sharif Cooper the start, I think by the end of the season he'd be a top 10 rookie in the league. Uh, because... He's one of the best facilitators in the game. Honestly, go watch his highlights. You know what I'm talking about? He really is. You just got to give him the opportunity. Now, he's not a great shooter. He hasn't developed yet. He needs to get his strength. He's a rookie, all these different things. But one thing he can do is pass the rock. 
and he can do it in a very flashy way and he can do it in a uh, above average way just for his just just already he's already there in terms of being able to get a, a lot of assists and in fact they have so many offensive weapons it would behoove them to give him more of an opportunity so i don't know what's going on there i don't watch watch the hawks but i know sharif cooper is and i won't be surprised one day when he's big time assist player excuse me so this is what we're looking at in regards to the hawks as far as our, our team is concerned because we got malik monk back because we got anthony davis out there and no lebron I'm looking for us to be heavy on the on the AD. Even though he we're supposed to be putting him in minutes restriction, we didn't have him in minutes restriction on the Philly game, and he seemed to handle that very well. The fact that he had the last game off, I'd love to see us try to trot him out there, see if we can get him 25 plus minutes tonight. Uh, and, and if he reacts well to it, great. Keep an eye on that wrist, because we know he hurt it in that game. Um, and you just kind of bolt through it. So, you know, it is what it is. When you when you when you talk about AD, you know the injuries are always going to be on the forefront of your mind it's just that's just what it is so we just got to deal with that um what else there are several players on this team you got to pay attention to uh in that hawks team and, and and at the end of the day because we don't know if hunter and trey young are playing it's kind of hard to game plan now as you know i'm not a big fan of frank vogel's rotation patterns his defensive principles offensive i'm not a fan of any of that um and i do believe that he's going to get in the way as he always does one thing I know about this team is you can't go small against them. And he ain't going to be able to help himself. He will go small against them. Or he'll play DeAndre Jordan. And DeAndre isn't very um, effective anymore. This is, is the way I'm going to say it. So I would rather us play Dwight Howard, who has also played for the Atlanta Hawks in the past for a season. Um, but Frank's not going to do what you want him to do. He's going to do what he feels is best and whatever he has planned. And that's just what it's going to be. So... We'll see what he does. You know, I expect him to do stuff that I don't want to see him do. That's the reality of it. Trevor Reese is going to be out there a lot. Um, you know, uh, some of our other guys that we'd rather not see so much. THT will probably be out there a lot. Avery Bradley's going to probably start and get a bunch of minutes. It's just a lot of stuff that he does that I feel makes the roster worse. And you guys already know that. <laughs> so I'm not going to get into that much further than that. It's just hard to be very optimistic about the team when you know that this is going to be the case but with Anthony Davis out there and playing as well as he has maybe we give ourselves a shot to overcome some of that um so we'll see the good thing about the, the thing about it and it's not a good thing but the thing about it is this because they have Okongwu because they have Capella because they have um my other guy out there, the power forward that they have, was very, very good. You have to understand that it's going to be a situation where you can't go small against them. You know, you cannot go small against this team. And and, and when you do, you run the risk of being out-rebounded dramatically. You run the risk of having issues scoring in the paint and et cetera, because they definitely have three bigs that can go hard against you. Um, so that's what it is, man. That is what it is, man. John Collins is the name that I can never seem to remember, but he is definitely going to be a guy who probably go off huge against us, especially if Trey and DeAndre Hunter are not out there. So John Collins is probably the guy that you must pay the most attention to of all. Uh, between him, Kevin Herter, and Bogdanovich, those are the three guys that I expect to be uh, the heavy hitters if Trey's not out there. John Collins. I tell you, I can never remember this man's name. You can go back and watch just about every Hawks video I've done over the last three years, and I promise you each and every time, John Collins' name does not come to my mind. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know what it's about. He's a fantastic player, somebody I would love to even have on this team. And it's not like I can't. I can see his face in my head, but for whatever reason, reason the words John and Collins just do not pop up very often. <laughs> it was a problem I had making this video initially. But John Collins is the guy understand that because of the fact that they have so many issues with rotations and things of that nature because they have so much talent it's hard to know who to put on the floor and win i think that's the problem that they have with their roster it's just too many b guys you know like one a one b b guys they have plenty of them, a whole team full of them but i think the, the one mainstay the one constant no matter what's going on literally no matter what John Collins is going to play well. You know, I think that John Collins is very close to making an all-star team someday. He's been at that level for a couple of years, in my opinion. He's been able to score 30 points in a basketball game since basically he was a rookie. And he's just kind of spent his whole career under the radar in Atlanta. 
but we remember that the Atlanta Hawks made the Eastern Conference Finals last year. And, of course, John Collins was a huge part of that. He could shoot the ball. He could rebound the ball. He could block shots. Fantastic athlete. He can jump out the gym, catch all kinds of lobs, uh, mid-range. He doesn't really have too many holes on his offensive game. And so, you know, given the fact that we like to go small, you play with John Collins like that, he's going to go off. So, I, I you know, I, I don't like how I've been – predicting people's numbers lately because they haven't really fallen into place but what i will say is if john collins goes for 30 it's exactly what i expect to see he's that kind of player you know he's gonna he's gonna score and he's gonna score a lot that that corner three-point shot he's very comfortable with uh he gets easy 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 buckets you know a uh, big time athlete so john collins hopefully i never forget that name again um so yeah man kevin herter you know like i said he can do a lot of different things uh trey young if he's out there you know what it is you know, he's a big-time scorer, big-time assist guy, superstar personified, one of the top rookies, rookies, one of the top point guards in the game, and probably somebody who is in contention uh, for an all-star appearance this year. Um, if he didn't start, I didn't check. So he might he might actually be starting, probably should be. So, you know, when you're dealing with um, the Atlanta Hawks, first thing you're thinking about is him, and the last thing you're thinking about is him. And at the end of the day, if he's not playing, more balance for their team is what you should expect. Uh, so, yeah, I actually have more to say about the Hawks than I say I have to say about my team because when I start talking about my team, as you know, it ain't nothing but pessimism and, and anger. I want us to fire Frank Vogel. I think LeBron wants us to fire Frank Vogel. From what I understand, listen to people talk, there's a lot of people out there who think LeBron is actually faking this injury because he's angry about some things, and one of the things he may be angry about is the fact that we haven't fired Frank Vogel. But in my opinion... Um, the only thing that's keeping us from firing Frank Vogel is the fact that we're paying two coaches. We're paying two. You know, we still got Byron Scott and Luke Walton on payroll right now, and it's not too too good to try to stretch another one, you know, try to try to have that on the books further, going further. So I think Genie doesn't want to do that. But at the same time, it's like if you want to salvage the season, you have to see the fruit in changing the style of play and, and most importantly, getting an offensive coach down there. <laughs> The biggest problem the Lakers have, above all else, including lack of uh, talent on the roster, is the fact that we don't have a coach that will run a play. Like, literally just draw up a play out of his mind to make things happen so that the ball can go somewhere and ultimately in the basket. The last play in the game, we had a really good opportunity at the last play of that game against Charlotte for with nine seconds to go in a timeout to draw something else and get a play that could ultimately win us the game. Instead, we put the ball in Russell Westbrook's hands and he just kind of takes a few dribbles and just jacks up a bad three. The, the probability of us winning that game with, it, with with that being the case is, is extremely slim. You're going to lose that game most times. You know, that three-point shot is not going to fall damn near ever. And so, I mean, like, are you trying to win or are you not? And it's just one of those situations where I just am of the mindset that you know, Frank Vogel just doesn't know how to put us in positions to succeed in those situations. Now, when we had other coaches there to assist him, like Jason Kidd and John Hollins, um, or oh, Lionel Hollins, excuse me, we had an opportunity to have someone else who could do those things for him. Why LeBron James isn't drawing up plays, maybe that's not his strength, I don't know. But I would imagine a genius like LeBron James could draw up plays himself. Maybe he doesn't want to step on people's toes. Maybe he doesn't care to do that at all. I don't know, but we need it from somewhere. So... When I start talking about the Lakers, ain't number frustration and pessimism. But as far as the Hawks concerned, it's a lot of wonder because I wonder if Trey Young's going to play. And if not, I wonder if Sharif Cooper is going to get an opportunity. And if he does, is he going to be able to show the world what I know he can do? So these are things. What's going on with, with uh, Clint Capella, as I said? Why is he look so inept this year? Is he hurt? Is he just not in a good offense? What's going on with that? Onyeka Kongwu, is he going to have a double-double tonight? I'd expect so. You know, is, is Bogdanovich, I think he's only been back for a couple games. Is he going to go off and hit like eight threes or seven threes or something crazy like he's capable of doing on a super hot night? With our defense being as it is, it's possible. Now, what I want to see kind of offset that is Stanley Johnson get more minutes. 
Stanley Johnson has always affected things in a positive way for the Los Angeles Lakers. He's someone who's going to continue to do so. He's not afraid to take a shot, even though he's not a gifted shooter. He's not afraid to get in the mix, play defense. That's what he's good at. He rebounds the ball. He helps us. And in small ball lineups, he tends to be effective. Very, very effective. Now, he tries to guard people that are bigger than him because he's put in positions to do so and in those situations he may get shot over that's no fault of his own but I like what he does he'll scrap and he goes hard so I'd love for him to get all of the minutes that we would want to give to a guy like Trevor Reza and DeAndre Jordan who ultimately do not help us at all um also Carmelo Anthony he's been up and down up and down up and down one game he's really good next game he's not so good another game he's really good next not so good he had a pretty good in the game in the last game. I'd like to see him string together two good games in a row, help us out, cut down on all the bad fouls that he tends to do, uh, rebound the ball as he has, hit his shots, and ultimately continue his play um, as he has. Because for him to be as great as he is, he really is very inconsistent for our team. And we just need him to kind of zero in, be his old self, and pick his spots and, and, and knock down those shots. Um, also... <laughs> How's Malik Monk going to bounce back from this injury? We gave him the game off against Charlotte. You know, he's been kind of inconsistent for his standards as well after having a very good start to the season. Is he going to be able to give us uh, the good play or is he going to be kind of still hobbled by that injury? Question marks. Russell Westbrook had a whole 35 points in the last game. Probably the best game he's played as a Laker. Is that going to continue or is he going to revert back to his old ways of not being uh, at his best? Can we keep our turnovers down? We only had 12 in the last game. My magic number has always been 14 when we're fully healthy. Our team is almost fully healthy with the exception of LeBron James, who actually contributes to our turnovers quite a bit. So without him, maybe those turnovers are down. Who knows? We'll keep an eye open for that. Um, so, yeah, these are the things that are, that are coming to mind about the Lakers, man. You know, uh, if anything, I can honestly say if this is a betting game and you're betting on someone to win, uh, I would just keep my money in my pocket. <laughs> keep my money in my pocket. I always say better on the Lakers to lose because they're always going to give opportunities to the other team to do so. As long as Frank Vogel's coaching, he's definitely going to play into the other team's hands. The fact that they have those three bigs that are going to get high usage today in Capella, Onyeka, Kongu, and Collins, I would imagine going small against them is a deadly mistake. And I expect them to do that. So I don't think we're going to win. Especially since they have so much shooting all over the place with Herter and Collins and, and Bogdanovich. All of those guys can shoot. Um, um, Lou Williams. Uh, Danilo Gallinari, they have shooting in a lot of key areas that can help them and rebounding in key areas that can help them as well. The only thing they have to really figure out is how to get everybody the ball. And as long as Trey Young's on the floor, that's only going to happen sporadically. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I have literally no idea if Trey's going to play, and that determines quite a bit. So that's what it is, man. I think the game should be starting right now. Or no, about, about 25 minutes or so, 10 o'clock. And uh, yeah, man. <laughs> There was something else I wanted to mention in regards to this team. It came to mind. It left me just as quick. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about the Los Angeles Lakers, we want to acknowledge that this is the end of the road trip. <clears throat> and a lot of times when it's the last game of the road trip, guys tend to be sluggish. Guys tend to be anxious to get home, get back on that flight, and end this road trip. Uh, we have not fared that well on this road trip. Now, injuries have kind of robbed us of that. We get that. Uh, but ultimately, we took care of the games that we think we were supposed to win. And we're very close to winning a game that we knew we absolutely were, absolutely were not supposed to win. So all things considered, you feel okay about the road trip, I guess. You know, there was there was a there was a thought in my mind where we'd only win one of these games. So success, I guess. Um, yeah, man. Also, 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 I want to see the Los Angeles Lakers put themselves in a position to shorten their bench as it pertains to some of these guys that can't help us. I do want to see guys like Austin Reeves get more minutes. You know, I, I want to see us put guys on the floor like Dwight Howard who can actually help us. It is very, very important that we start to recognize who is of service to this team and who is not and act accordingly. Uh, our coach tends to put the wrong players on the floor and let them struggle. He tends to remove players off the floor that help us that are doing well. I understand he has minutes to manage, you know, and, and different egos to manage. And a lot of different things that come with that. But at the end of the day, it is so very, very important that you play the hot hand. When you got this little time left in terms of games left, and we're in a tight race with us losing ground on Portland as they're continuing to get healthy. 
we must understand this is not a situation where we can start giving games away. I really do believe that um, it, you know, it's one of those situations where, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Braun not going has hurt us quite a bit. Now, if you hurt, you hurt. You know, ain't nobody gonna question if he's hurt because he's been carrying the load for all this time. But if we are actually sitting him purposefully so that we can see who can do what and all this other stuff at this stage in the game, that is a mistake. This far into the season, we should not be experimenting with removing certain players from the floor to see what other people can do. And a part of me thinks that might be part of what we're doing. Um, I, I don't believe that LeBron James is in the business of missing games. Um, you know, he's, he's fought through injuries before. We've seen situations where... You know, he had the opportunity to load manage, and he's told us many times he doesn't believe in that. If he can go, he can go, and he stands on that. I want to believe that. I really do. But I also see the circumstances surrounding the team. I hear the chatter, and I have my questions about what the Lakers are actually trying to do here. And the fact that we didn't have nobody on the floor for us, all three of the, you know, whether Westbrook played, but we had so many players missing from the Charlotte game, and so many guys who are on the trade block whose value needs to be raised was on the floor for meaningful minutes, such as DJ and Bazemore. If our strategy is to put them on the floor for meaningful minutes to try to raise their value so we can get them out of here, it's too late to be doing that bullcrap. And you definitely shouldn't be doing it on this road trip. So um, I don't know that that's what the Lakers are doing, but yeah, I see a scenario like that where that's what they're doing. So who knows? At the end of the day, I just think this entire season has been mismanaged from the start of it when we first put this team together. <laughs> And I think it may be too late to fix it, to be completely honest with you. I think the issue that we run into if we fire our coach is trying to bring in another coach um, and having him catch up to speed and then be able to implement his principles and then get the guys to get those principles and then continue to win games. It's just a lot. It might be too late. We should have fired Frank Vogel two months ago when I first initially said it, when Dan, the Lakers fan, initially said it. It should have been done then. That way, by now, we could have all that out the way and we would be in a good space, but again, mismanage. So, yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. We're not a good team this year. What can I say? Bad teams do bad things. We could sit here and suggest all the stuff the Lakers do in the world every day till our, our voices go. But at the end of the day, they're doing what they're going to do. And right now, they're going to continue to do what they're what, what we're doing, which is, is being a 500 basketball club. <laughs> Unacceptable with this much talent on the team. Absolutely unacceptable. So hopefully we can turn some things around starting right now. Russell's coming off a great game. AD played great last we saw him. If we can get that type of performance from both of them, Atlanta's out of here. We've beaten them today. If we get AD playing that great and Russell playing that great, yeah, the win is ours. So hopefully that's what we see, man. Hopefully that's what we see. Watch out for the balance if Trey ain't out there. My name is BDL44. Enjoy the game, y'all. Peace.